So in 1964, a doctor by the name Edward Bishop came up with a um, tool to determine whether cervix can be used to find out the chances of having a good outcome after induction. That led to the development of what we call a Bishop score. So in 1964, he published the factors that you look at um, on the cervix to determine its readiness for induction and whether the outcome will be favorable or not. This tool was called the Bishop score and the Bishop score is also called the cervix score. So the main indication for this tool later on came to be uh, found that it really assists in the prediction of the outcome of induction of labor, whether it is going to be favorable or not. Uh, as well, it is also used to assess the chances of spontaneous preterm delivery. So, but the first indication is the most commonly used um, indication for this tool. So the main components of a bishop score are five, the cervical consistency, the position of the cerv cervix, then dilatation and how effaced the cervix is, and finally, the fetal station. So the cervical consistency refers to basically the texture of the cervix, and this now uh, is normally linked to, is normally likened to whether it is soft, medium, or hard. So a soft cervix consistency will actually be um, um, likened to when you're, you're touching the lips and how soft it is. Um, the medium firmness will be um, likened to when you're touching the cheek and the hard firmness will actually be likened to when you're touching the nose. So as obviously as you would expect, a softer cervix is uh, more ready to actually, uh, it, it shows that the cervix is more likely to have a good outcome if induction happens compared to a firm one. Cervical position, position is basically the, um, the position of the cervix relative to how the fetal head and the maternal pelvis looks like. And originally, the the position of the cervix is normally posterior. So as one nears a spontaneous uh, labor, then it normally tries to move towards the anterior. Therefore, the anterior position will give a higher score compared to when it is still posterior. Then the other one that normally goes together with dilatation is effacement. And basically, that is the thinning of the cervix. Um, so we would expect us the labor proceeds, the cervical um, thinness will actually be more. Therefore, it will go up to a paper thin cervix. So the one that is still thick um, is termed to actually have a cervical effacement of 0%. And the one that is paper thin, that will be termed to be 100%. So the score is given between 0 and 3 points as the maximum. And the 3 points is normally given when we have effacement of 80% and above. The other aspect is dilatation, which comes hand in hand with effacement. And dilatation is simply the opening up of the cervix. And this happens because, obviously, of the effacement that we are having. So um, uh, when we do, the cervix is totally not dilated, it is zero centimeters. And when it is fully dilated, it is 10 centimeters. So normally, even if you're testing with, if you're doing a vaginal examination with your digits, you can actually not feel the boundaries of the cervix if it is fully dilated. So from um, anywhere between uh, five and above, then it will be given the highest point of three, but anything um, below 3.4, uh, th three centimeters to four centimeters, then that will be two centimeters dilated. If it is totally not dilated, then a score of zero will be given. Finally, the fifth and important um, factor is fetal station. And this is basically the position of the fetal head in relation to the ischial spines. So the position of the ischial spine is normally given a station of zero. Anything above the ischial spine, that would mean the fetal head is still within the pelvis and floating, that will be given a negative value. Anything below, anything with a positive sign, will be regarded as a fetal head that has passed the feet, the ischial spine, and that means it is on its way out. When the, it is, we have now full engagement where the fetal head is at the position of the ischial spine, that is given, uh, that is normally regarded as a station of zero. So these five factors are normally used uh, together uh, to come up with a, with a aggregate value. And as you can see, the highest scores are normally given to factors that look like they are going to achieve better outcome. So when the position of the cervix is anterior, 
has a score of two. When the consistency is almost soft, it has a, a score of two. When the effacement is above 80%, then it has a score of three, which is the maximum. When the deletion is above five, then it has a score of three. And when the station is plus one or plus two, that means it is uh, the fetal head is on its way out, then it's given a maximum score of three. So as you can see, there are two factors that only acquire a maximum of two points, and there are other three factors that acquire a maximum of three. That means that the scoring would have a total of 13 points, where each component can get a minimum of zero and a maximum of three. So the total score range is between zero and 13. And if from that aggregate you get a score of nine or above, then that means um, that that means that the success of the induction might be favorable. So somebody is actually the midwife or the obstetrician is actually encouraged to in uh, to induce labor. However, if you have a score of less than five, then that means the chances of the induction being successful is low so you might highly like you are highly likely to actually have a failed induction so there's no need of trying that so that is the use of the bishop score hope you've understood